Welcome back. Today on Dialed In DIY, we're making a new kind of an alcohol stove. This is the Penny Stove. You may recall that in a previous video we made the basic alcohol stove so that we could all learn how to work with one. I've also been making a lot of other alcohol-based burning devices, and you can check them all out in the links below. The materials are essentially the same as our previous basic version, but we have a different technique in putting it together. For more detailed information about the parts we're using, please see the description below. But for now, we're going to begin by cutting out the bottom of two aluminum cans. Just in case it's not obvious, please note that we are working with sharp objects, things that are going to catch on fire and things that will burn and create pressure. So there is definite risk. Please proceed with caution and do so knowing it's at your own risk. You'll notice I started by cutting the can roughly in half and then slowly trimmed it down until it was about the width of two of my fingers. That's about perfect for what I want on this project. I'm going to take the second can and trim it down till it's about half the size of the first can. Once we have our cans cut to size, we're going to grab another can and start stretching out the larger piece. You do that by setting the bottom of one can into that other bottom piece and start twisting. That will stretch it out just enough to make the smaller piece slide inside a little bit easier. Now what we want to do is grab the smaller piece and mark where we're going to make the burn holes. We're going to do that from the inside by making four dots completely opposite from each other, making the shape of a plus on the inside with these dots. Once that's complete, we're going to go back and split the difference between each of the first set of dots and put in four more. We'll have a total of eight dots that will be our burner holes. While you're at it, you can go ahead and mark a spot on the center point of the bottom of the can in the very middle. This is going to be for where we fill the fuel. Now, grab a punch or a drill and go ahead and make your hole. You can tell by these center fill hole pictures that I've made them large, medium, or multiple small. It all works out pretty much the same in the end. Now what you want to do is punch little holes in the exact spots where you have the marks. I'm using a hole punch kind of a device that I can push through and I'm making sure that I just get a tiny little hole there. But if you have a thumbtack, you can always push a thumbtack through and it will work really well too. Just don't go too deep with it. I'll make more comment about that when we're looking at the demo, but for now, we're going to go back and just sand out any rough edges, and then we're going to take some of the paint off the side of the can on this little piece so we can make a better connection and we cement them together. And then you're going to want to clean them up a little bit before we move on to the next step. The next step is you're going to grab some fiberglass insulation, and I'm just grabbing a little rectangle here and starting to pull it apart so that we can fluff it out a little bit. This is going to serve as a wick, and you're going to shove it down into the larger can, resting it in the bottom. You can see this smaller piece is going to go in just like this when we're done. Now you want to prepare your bonding cement. I've mentioned in the last video that I prefer the JB Weld. I've tried JB Quick, but for something like this where we're going to be heating things up, I really like the set that you get from the JB Weld itself. Mixing these two together makes for a really strong bond when you're done. I've yet to have a failure from something that I've allowed to cure completely. At this point, I'm basically taking a little stick and rubbing around about a quarter of an inch size band of the weld on the inside. Then we're going to go back and fit the two pieces of can together. This does tend to get messy, so you want to have something handy to help you clean up. In the meantime, cut a couple of rectangles from the leftover cans. We're going to use these as shims to help put this together. You'll notice that I started by taking the burner hole side and pushing it in at a slight angle and then adding the shims, one on one side and then one on the other. We can then check these shims and slide them around carefully while we push the two pieces in towards each other. Again, this is getting messy, but it works. Once I have the two pieces of burner set together, I remove the shims and then go back and carefully push the pieces together until I have it adjusted just the way I like. Then it's time to go back and clean up the mess we made. Once you've done this, you want to go around and apply a little bit of gentle pressure around the edge. This will make sure you get a really good seal and get rid of any gaps. Now comes the really important part. You want to let it dry according to the instructions on your cement. Hey, if you have the chance, try experimenting with different sizes and designs. That way you can find what works the best for you and the uses that you want to use it for. While that one was drying, I decided to show you a test run on another one of my penny stoves. Because of the hole in the middle, all you have to do is pour the alcohol right on top and it will seep down inside. Once it's full, you put a penny over the holes and that helps to keep everything sealed off and it'll force your vapor out through your burner holes. You may remember from the last time I like to start these by setting them on a soup can lid and putting a little alcohol around the edges. You can light that alcohol and then it will start to heat up the alcohol inside your stove 
As that happens, it'll vaporize and it'll start to make a flame out of your burner holes. As the fuel heats up, the pressure inside increases the amount of pressure that the vapor is coming out with, which means your flames grow higher. You'll remember earlier I said I was going to come back to the burner hole size. Well, the importance here is the more of them you make and the larger of them that they are, the less pressure is forcing the fuel out, which means your flames won't go quite as high. So try experimenting a little bit, but don't cut corners and go too few on the holes. Otherwise, you'll develop way too much pressure and that could be dangerous. There's multiple ways to end up with too much pressure and I wanted to show you an example. The inset videos of the burner we made in this project, but I used too much fuel around the base to get it started. I did this intentionally so you could see how much overpressure you get. That rattling sound? That's the penny bouncing because there's way too much pressure inside. Fortunately, in this case, the penny works as a relief valve and we ended up without having a catastrophic event. So, I encourage you to start slow and get used to how much alcohol you should use in your stove and what the results are. I promised I'd tell you how long this fuel lasts and actually once we got to a usable flame, we had over 30 minutes of total burn time with that 1.4 ounce or 40 cc's of rubbing alcohol. After that, the flame dropped down for a little while and eventually burned out. Once it was completely out, I let it sit and between 10 to 15 minutes later, it was cool to the touch, just about as cool as it was when we started. I have plenty more designs on burner styles and accessories, so come on back and see what we have in the future. Thank you for watching. Please press like and then subscribe. There will be more dialed in DIY to come.